Good morning and blessed Palm Sunday to each of you that are joining in with us on this blessed Sunday morning. We are once again here in the sanctuary, live in the sanctuary of the Right Way Church of Dallas, Texas, located at 4300 Ramona Avenue in the heart of Oak Cliff which is, in fact, in Dallas, Texas. We thank you for joining in with us this blessed Sunday morning, and we are grateful to each and every one of you uh, for being part of this uh, broadcast and this Facebook Live. Uh, again, I want to encourage you that every Sunday morning, uh, at 10.45 a.m. we will be on, live on Facebook as we are now. But then also at 8 p.m. every Wednesday we will be live on Facebook with our Wednesday Bible study which will not exceed 30 minutes. So certainly you can join in with us and certainly we pray that you will be blessed. Uh, we do realize that today is the Sunday preceding Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, and we are grateful to God, and we come realizing that truly Jesus is the reason for this blessed season. And so today, I do want to lift up all of those that are going through sickness, certainly all of those that are dealing with the coronavirus and all other sicknesses across this land. But then again, we also are praying for those that uh, did not survive the virus all over this world. Our hearts and our prayers go out to those families. And so on today, uh, I want to mention a good friend of my uh, co-worker and a friend of mine that's like a brother, Brother Raymond Basie's great childhood friend uh, that Raymond and Elam King grew up together. And so today, we are praying and calling out Elam King's name and asking that all of us would be in prayer for him, uh, that God will continue to heal his body and that God's will be done in Brother King's life. He is, as I said, the very close friend uh, of my friend and brother and co-worker at Sewell Cadillac, Raymond Basie. Elam King is Raymond's friend. They've been knowing each other since they were 10 years old. And so we are praying for Brother Elam on this morning. And not only Brother Elam, but especially him, but anyone else that stands in need of prayer. Would you bow your head right where you are? And close your eyes as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come now asking that you would heal the land. For your word says, if your people whom are called by your name, Lord, we pray. 
pray that your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We believe by faith that you're going to certainly bring to us whatever it is that we're going through. So we believe the blood of Jesus from the top of every head to the sole of all feet. Anoint right now, Lord. Bless and heal as only you can do. Lord, we know you have all power in your hands. So Lord, we declare victory right now. Over everything. Lord, we thank you in advance. Lord, I feel your presence in this place, Lord. I, I feel your presence flowing all over this land and this world. Lord, we pray now. Lord, I want to thank you for the right way church, this ministry. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to progress to this point. That were we viewed by not just hundreds, but by thousands now. So Lord, we thank you. We're grateful, Lord. We're humble. We love you. We bless you. We lift up holy hands, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. An old song says, Jesus, keep me.
But we must examine ourselves, and in so doing, we are to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But those who eat and drink, eat and drink judgment to themselves if they do not judge the body rightly. So at this time, we ask that you would bow your head and close your eyes. And this is a prayer that you will pray silently, one-on-one, -on -one, to the Lord, between you and him, asking for forgiveness of any and all sins before partaking of this sacred Lord's Supper, one of the most sacred ordinances of the Lord's church. Let us pray at this time. Lord, we come to this table as your guest, resting in the worthiness of your son Jesus, who died on the cross for all of our sins. Lord, we are reminded how our Savior was bruised for our sins, how he hung bled and died, how his body was beaten, and how he shed his blood for all of us. So Lord, we pray now, asking for forgiveness of all of our sins. Lord, we pray that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, as we partake of the cup and the bread, may your indwelling, your spirit indwell with us and be with us, Lord, till we sit with you at your table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you will take hold of the bread right where you are. Don't eat it yet. Hold it as I am doing. In 1 Corinthians 11 chapter and the 23rd verse says these words in the New American Standard Translation. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We eat the bread. Now, if you will carefully take hold of the cup, while holding the cup in your hand, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 25th through the 26th verses says these words, hold the cup, don't drink it yet, I'll let you know when. In the same way, he took the cup, also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Will you drink? Song says, I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on. 
don't have me sing for y'all. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood. Improve 
the facilities and take care of our uh, responsibilities yet even in times like this. So we thank God for you and again we thank God for you uh, joining in with us on this blessed Palm Sunday morning and we will be communicating to you uh, what we have in store for Easter Sunday which is on next Sunday Amen. But certainly we will be live at 1045 a.m. once more and again here at the Right Way Church. And then again, we encourage you uh, to join in with us uh, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. for teaching as well. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and then I'm going to share a brief word uh, from the Lord with you on this morning. Let us bow. Father, we come now thanking you for another blessed Sunday morning. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to share your word on today. Lord, we pray a special blessing to everyone that is tuned in and everyone that will tune in at any given time to this broadcast. But now we stand in need of a word from you. Lord, we want to hear what you have to say to us your word on today. Be with me, your humble servant. Prepare the hearts and minds of your people to receive your word on today. Lord, use me for your glory. Lord, I'm just a vessel ready to be used by you. Lord, have thine own way in this blessed place on this world. Lord, speak to me yet at the same time. Speak through me. Hide me behind the cross. Cover me with your blood. We'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. If you would, right where you are, turn your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. I want to share with you uh, verses. 6 through 11, but I, I'm going to be real efficient on today, as I always try to be, but I know that we had to cover some other things this morning, so I want you to bear with me. If I had the late, my late great pastor, the Reverend Dr. S.M. Wright here on today, he would tell you that he's gonna, I'm going to hump this off. And so I want y'all to bear with me as I hump this off and uh, keep it brief. But 1 Peter chapter 5, let's read. I'll do the reading as you all follow. We'll read verses 6 through 11. <clears throat> Focusing in on verse number 7. Will you follow as I read right now from the New American Standard, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, and it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting up all your 
anxiety on him because he cares for you. Verse 8, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Verse 9, but resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to this, to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Verse 11 closes by saying, to him be dominion forever and ever. For the sake of our subject, go back to that seventh verse, and I believe the King James Version says it like this, casting all of your cares on him because he cares for you. If you would, I want to speak briefly from the subject this morning. I'm so glad he cares. I'm so glad he cares. Church, I believe that's good news this morning for us to simply be reminded that our Lord still cares for us. And we find that this is the first letter of the apostle Peter. And Peter is writing to an audience that is suffering various trials and afflictions. That sounds like us today, suffering trials and afflictions and Peter is not only writing uh, at a time where the church is suffering trials uh, and the people are suffering afflictions, uh, but it's also a time where Peter is writing, uh, telling the church that the worst is yet to come. Have I got any witnesses here on today? And when we look at uh, the news and and all that's going on uh, at this time in our world and certainly down south where we are, the word is that we have not yet seen uh, the worst of these times. I wish y'all would pray with me today. I'm not going to hold you long, but we've discovered in the good news, church, that in it uh, a blessing to be reminded that the Lord still cares. Yes, yes, he, he certainly still cares. And I want to let you know that the author of the text certainly is titled by the name. It, it is the Apostle Peter that writes this text uh, around A.D. 64. And as I said, Peter is writing. He has authored this letter, and uh, it says the first letter, so we know that he wrote more than one letter. Amen? And, and so Peter is writing to folk that are going through. And I believe that I'm talking uh, to somebody, and, and I'm a living witness myself, that we are all uh, going through some stuff right now. But I come to tell you, church, that the good news is uh, that we are not going to stay where we are. That's why I say we are going through. Amen. And so we thank God that he cares enough to let us know and that we can be encouraged that this too shall 
has. Now as we look at the text today, we, we find that that word humble. And if you recall two weeks ago, uh, I believe it was March 22nd, the first time that we were forced to broadcast, but it's a blessing to broadcast. And amen. And I declare that we'll continue to broadcast even when God opens the church doors back open because we believe by faith that it is a blessing to many and we're grateful to God. And so when we are uh, back on March 22nd, I begin to uh, talk about healing the land, that God will heal the land. And, and, and in that text, as I mentioned before, it has that word humble. And how many know, church, that these are humbling times that we are, in fact, living in. We are living in humble times. It does not matter how much money you got. It, it, it does not matter where you live. It does not matter uh, what name brand uh, things you possess. We have all been humbled as a result of what we're going through. Am I right about it here? Hold me up here just a little bit, Brother Tim. I'm going to get there before it's over. We, we find church that some theologians say that first uh, that you cannot help me Lord Jesus ah uh, you cannot handle the blessings that God shares with us in verses 6 and 7 excuse me in verse 7 if you don't get down verses 5 and 6 of First Peter this fifth chapter. In other words, we cannot just jump to verse number seven unless we acknowledge what five, verse five and six requires of us. Can I read that to you? It says in first Peter uh, chapter five, verse five and six. Watch this. Uh, you younger men likewise be subject to your elders. And all of you, and then it says, clothe yourselves, watch that word, with humility toward one another. And see, I believe that's what God is doing in this season, that he is allowing us to not only be humble ourselves, but he is calling us to be humble toward one another. Have I got a witness here? And so it says that to be humble toward one another for God, watch this, is opposed to the pride. But he gives grace to the humble. Goes on in verse 6 to say, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And you know what? I, I like Peter telling us that God has a mighty hand. And we know that certainly the Lord does have a mighty hand. But what I like about Peter is Peter is not telling you what he heard. Peter is telling you what he has grown to know about the Lord. Are y'all going to pray with me today? Can I prove it to you? Peter found out. Mark chapter 1 verses 29 through 30. One, when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Peter said Jesus has a mighty hand. Have I got a witness? Here I, I want to encourage somebody today and let you know that, that Jesus I believe he'll heal you too. How I got a witness here. I'm not ready to close you yet. Not only did Jesus heal Peter's mother-in-law in Mark chapter 1, but he also gave Peter a great catch of fish. 
in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. If I had Peter Johnson Jr. here today, he would tell you uh, that Peter experienced, he had a neck breaking experience. Peter caught and the other fishermen, the disciples caught more fish that they could even handle. And they were so blessed that they had to help other folk join in with their blessing. Have I got a witness here? I'm telling somebody here today that I thank God that he has blessed us
Yeah.